Our counting system uses what we call base 10, because there are 10 digits, 0 through 9. Of course, you can re represent these numbers in any base. Computers, for example, use binary or base 2 because there are, well, two digits, 0 and 1. We'll talk about that more, but for now, let's go over converting numbers to and from base 10. When writing out numbers in base 10 or lower, the highest single digit will be x minus 1, where x is the base. So in base 8, the highest digit will be 7. But what about bases above 10, where we don't have the digits to represent them? The numbers 10 onwards are represented by letters. For example, 11 becomes B. So a possible number in base 16 is EA3B4, which is 959,412 in base 10. Now let's learn how to convert these numbers. First, converting from base 10 to other bases. The process is very simple. You take your number, divide it by the base, then write the result and the remainder. Then divide that result by the new base, and so on and so forth. You then write all of the remainders from top to bottom or backwards, and there you go, you have your number. Let's take an example and convert 366 base 10 to base 16. So, 366 divided by 16 is 22, remainder 14, and 14 is E. 22 divided by 16 is 1, remainder 6, and 1 divided by 16 is 0, remainder 1. So, 366 base 10 is 16 E base 16. Now let's convert from other bases to base 10. Here again you start with the last digit. You multiply that digit by x to the power of 0, where x is the base. The next digit to the left is multiplied by x to the power of 1, then to the power of 2, and so on and so forth. Once you have all of your new numbers, you just add them up, and there you go. Let's show an example and convert 16e back to base 10. So, e times 16 to the power of 0 is e, which is 14. 6 times 16 to the power of 1 is 96. 1 times 16 to the power of 2 is 256. 256 plus 96 plus 14 is 366. There we go. Super easy. Now, back to computers. Computers use binary digits, or bits for short. This is because a computer works by sending electrical signals. A signal is 1, and no signal is 0. Each of these values is a bit. The cutoff for a number is the bit count. An 8-bit number has 8 digits, and this is called the byte. A 32-bit number has 32 digits. So, to make a smaller number, in still 8-bit, zeros are placed at the beginning. For example, 00010110. It's all about filling up the space. So that 8-bit number is how computers decide when the first number has ended and the new one has started. The question that remains is how computers represent negative numbers. When normally talking about numbers in any base, including base 2, we can just put a negative sign. But computers only have signal or no signal, 0 or 1. So to represent negative numbers, we use a principle called 2's complement. In this principle, we assume that the first digit, or the most significant bit, is negative. For the duration of this video, let's just assume 8-bit numbers. Therefore, the first digit is either 0 or negative 128. So let's take an example and convert negative 56. We have to start with a 1 at the beginning to make it negative. The problem is that now we have negative 128, which is just too low. So the remaining 7 digits have to bring it back up to negative 56. So negative 128 plus 56 is 72. The remaining digits must be equal to 72. Let's convert that then, shall we? 72 divided by 2 is 36, remainder 0. 36 divided by 2 is 18, remainder 0. 18 divided by 9 is 9, remainder 0. 9 divided by 2 is 4, remainder 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2, remainder 0. And 2 divided by 2 is 1, remainder 0. 1 divided by 2 is 0, remainder 1. So our 7 digits are 1001000. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Our final number for negative 56 is 1100100. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. And there we go. Be careful when working with these numbers that you specify that you are using 2's complement. That way, people know what you're doing. The last difficulty is decimal numbers, because, again, there are no periods. 
In this case, we use what is called excess notation. This splits up a number into three sections, the sine bit, the exponent, and the mantissa. The mantissa is the number itself. The sine bit determines negative positive without using two's complement, so it holds no numerical value. It's just a one for negative and a zero for positive. That's it. The exponent determines where the decimal point lies. So if the value is one, then the decimal lies after the first digit. In 8-bit notation, the exponent is three bits long. Now for the exponent, some examples are 100, which means zero, 101, which means one, and 011, which means negative one. So let's just take an example and convert two and one fourth. The first step is to fill up the mantissa. For numbers after the decimal, it's just two to the power of negative whatever. So 0.1 is equivalent to one half, 0.01 is equivalent to one fourth, and so on and so forth. Two and one fourth becomes 10.01. So the mantissa is 1001, and the exponent has to be two to move the period over by two, which is 110. It's positive, so the sign is zero. Now we now have the full number, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And there we go. That's how you can convert negative and decimal numbers into binary. But what about letters? How do computers convert binary into characters? Well, the process is actually quite simple. The binary number is converted to hexadecimal or base 16, like we've learned earlier. Then that value represents a character. Now, I don't mean the letter digits. I mean each number is assigned to a character. There are tables you can find that convert hex to characters. For example, 61 is A and 3B is semicolon. And that's it. That is how number representation works in computers. It's a very simple concept and as long as you're familiar with converting numbers between the bases, using two's complement and excess notation, you should have no problems with any of this. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, definitely leave a like and don't forget to subscribe as well to see more cool content like this one. I actually have a video I made earlier about how computers work using the von Neumann architecture. So definitely go check that one out. You can also follow me on Twitter at Solid State Tweet for all the first updates on everything. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.